can I? Yeah. Okay, so people should be able to come in and maybe. Now, I did just log on to the Whova site. Okay, now there's people coming in. Because somebody noted um, that there's a host link in the agenda. I'm not sure what that means. But there's people coming in. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. oh, there's Esther. I'm going to promote her to panelists. All righty. I think I did that right. Well, she disappeared from the attendees. Hello. Oh, oh no, did I kick her? Oh, okay, there she is. Okay. Good morning. Good I'm morning, sorry Elaine. If we're having difficulties getting in. Uh, do you want to try pre uh, putting your screen up? I would. Thank you. You are quite well. Nope, I can't. I, I I don't have permission. Okay, wait a second. I will. There you go. Excellent. I don't need to share sound. All right. Should I just leave it up or do you want me to pull it down now? Go ahead and leave it up because All right, cool. the webinar is already on so people could go ahead and uh, join us. All right. And I'm not making too many weird noises on my end, right? No, you sound no. okay. So once um, <clears throat> the hour actually hits, I'll do the quick OESS code of conduct reading, and then I'll hand it over to you. Good deal, thank you. I think it's in five minutes towards the, um, five minutes till the end, we'll start the Q&A. Yep. Or five minutes until the end. Sorry, vocabulary is not so great yes. today. Well, I my haven't intention, had coffee. <laughs> my intention is to talk for 20 minutes, so I'll, I'll do my okay, best. Okay, awesome. <laughs> take off my face, doesn't need to be here. <laughs> All right, I've got one o'clock EST on my screen here. So I'd like to welcome everyone to this session on a collaboratively developing an OER music appreciation textbook. I have a quick statement to read on behalf of the conference. The Open Education Southern Symposium strives to offer an open, inclusive, and friendly environment for all participants. All attendees are expected to help maintain that professional and welcoming environment free of any type of harassment by being mindful of the space and the time you're taking up being aware of the dynamics of power and privilege, being considerate of others' desire for privacy, being respectful of others and accepting that differences in opinion and circumstances create a stronger collaborative environment and actively challenging individual biases and assumptions. Esther, take it away. Hello. Well, first of all, I'm gonna drop some links in the chat. Uh, here is a link to the textbook that I'm talking about and then also a link to the Google Drive folder that has all of the teaching materials. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about my experience writing a music appreciation textbook with a team of collaborators, most of whom were adjunct instructors. Um, I'm talking to anyone else who might be, I mean, well, anyone who's interested in adopting the book, of course, uh, but really anybody who's interested in taking on a project of, like this themselves, um, I want to really talk it up and make you excited about it. A lot of work, a lot of payoff. Oop, let's see if I can figure out how to advance my slides. All right, so here's what we're talking about. Residences Engaging Music in Its Cultural Context, published by the University of North Georgia Press in May of 2020. And you can see here the list of contributing authors. So I wanna start with my story about how this book came to be because it all came out of conversation. Uh, it, it started with a faculty learning community that I launched in January of 2018. And this is something that had been brewing in the back of my head for years. So I'm, I'm a tenured professor and I'm the coordinator of music appreciation at my institution, but it's a big institution and it's a huge program. So we have uh, five campuses actually, four of them 
uh, on which we offer music appreciation classes. Um, in the year that I launched this faculty learning community, we were teaching 40 sections across four campuses, 19 different instructors. 12 of them were contingent, mostly part-time instructors. And at least 10 of them I had never met. So I was, I was in charge of these people and coordinating these instructors who I'd never met and who hadn't met each other and most of whom who weren't really attached to the university in any really deep or meaningful way. So I just wanted us to talk to each other. I wanted us to build relationships. So we started by getting together for a day long retreat in January of that year. Uh, and we carried on uh, with a whole year of online exchanges, not as sophisticated as this last year. And if anyone's interested, I've written at length about that experience. Um, but the main thing that we talked about was what on earth are we doing? What is a music appreciation class supposed to accomplish? Um, I was super inspired by one of the things that we read as part of our FLC, an article by the music appreciation textbook authors, Stephen Cornelius and Mary Natvig, who have this idea, we believe that after taking a music appreciation course, students should be equipped with tools to distill fundamental understandings from all of their musical experiences, beginning with the here and now and extending to the there and then, that is from Beyonce to Bach. Um, if any of you know anything about music appreciation, it's usually presented as a chronological survey of classical music. And quite frankly, a lot of students don't get very excited about that. So two months after that initial kickoff retreat, one of the adjunct instructors sent an email. So he writes to the whole group, I'm wanting to revamp my approach to music appreciation next semester. Do you know of any textbooks or sources that organize music into moods? I'd like to present pieces that reflect moods or affects. And he gave a long list of ideas. So I responded, too fun, I love it, but I don't know of any textbook or other resource that takes such an approach. I basically, I blew him off. But another one of the adjunct instructors took him a little more seriously and he writes back, I see that some of these topics could be joined together to form larger units, has more ideas and floats this idea. My immediate reaction to this is if you can't find a text, make your own. Granted, writing an entire textbook is a huge project, but all right. So I responded to that one. If anyone is feeling super excited about this and suicidally ambitious, we could collaborate on an open textbook, textbook for UNG Press. I had actually just been appointed to the board. I knew about UNG Press's open textbook work. And there you go. I basically meant this as a joke. Um, uh, but the response was mind blowing. That same day, eight people wrote back and said, yes, I'm on board. I want to be a part of this. I want to contribute to this textbook. So I've got to talk a little bit about how being at a university system of Georgia institution influenced this project. Um, so first of all, the USG is very much in favor of the adoption and creation of OERs. So there's a lot of support for that. All courses that use OERs are flagged. So you get this $0 textbook costs attribute, uh, which is presumably appealing to students. Um, the, the Affordable Learning Georgia initiative provides grants, a lot of grants, a huge amount of money for the adoption and creation of OERs. Uh, and it just so happens that UNG Press, my institution, is uh, the Affordable Learning Georgia publishing partner. Um, and they publish high quality, peer reviewed, open access textbooks. And they do so under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 4.0 license. So um, per the directions of UNG Press, I got to work with Affordable Learning Georgia. Um, and sorry, the way I have my computer set up, I can't see things in the chat, but there'll be time at the end for me to be sure to address all and, that. And no worries, Esther, I'll monitor that and take care of it. Very good. Thank you so much. So Affordable Learning Georgia only gives grants to teams. So right, right from the start, there was a, a good reason to make this a collaborative project. Um, and the way that the grant structure is built, it encourages large teams. Uh, since we were doing uh, what's called a large scale textbook transformation uh, that affects an entire program and many, many students. Um, 
uh, we were able to apply for up to $30,000. Uh, but the press only asked for about $7,000 and individual stipends are capped at five. And so that's a lot of money to work with. And it allowed me to invite everyone to join the team. Um, so I issued a blanket invitation. We ended up with nine team members, seven of whom were uh, contingent instructors. We added another one in the second year, actually. Uh, another really important thing about ALG, though, is that they give you three semesters. So uh, we got the grant on February 1st of 2019, and the book was due to the press in the middle of October in order to get through peer review and correction and composition and everything in time to publish before the grant term was up. And even then we didn't quite make it. But um, so uh, so we, we got right to work. Uh, this just became my my whole life for nine months. Um, so I put together a series of Google Docs to which everyone had access so that as people who were writing at a text, others could provide immediate feedback. Um, so, uh, sorry, just a, a word about that. Um, I, I did a, most of the writing myself, uh, but following upon some collective conversation in which we all agreed about the correct approach to take uh, and selected some examples together. And I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, there were four other people who did contribute writing. Um, they had uh, one or two assigned sections and were able to add those directly in, get feedback in, in Google Docs. Uh, so then the book went out for peer review. Um, end of January, uh, I had a couple of weeks to respond to reviewers, make revisions. Uh, February, uh, I made all of the listening guides that are part of the book and selected and captioned images with a little bit of help from team members. March, the whole thing goes to UNG Press. And in May, we had two weeks to correct and publish. Of course, one of the wonderful things about this mode of publication is the corrections are ongoing. We've actually had three additional rounds of little fixes and posting the revised PDF. And because this book lives primarily as a free PDF on a website, it's no big deal to update that PDF. So just a little bit about contents in case anyone is, cares about music appreciation. Um, we took on this project because we weren't happy with any of the books out there. Uh, we wanted to be teaching out of a book that had a diverse selection of musical examples drawn from art, folk, and popular traditions around the world, and that were organized according to themes, uh, specifically what music means in societies and how it's used instead of in the chronological ways and where each chapter would mix together a really diverse collection of examples. Uh, we totally threw out the idea that there's any sort of uh, 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 coverage that needs to be accomplished in music appreciation. Uh, the point of this class in our eyes is that students have a really meaningful and rewarding uh, encounter with music uh, at the college level. Uh, they don't need to come out knowing anything in particular, but rather having learned how to think about music and recognize its significance in their lives and societies. The book is designed to be super modular, so you can teach any chapters you want or any parts of any chapters, individual examples. You can hop around. There's different ways to move through it based on your specific goals as an instructor. And it was always my vision that people would take it more as a framework than a textbook and create their own examples and bring those to the table. And I'm actually just now launching the project that will make that possible where people using the book can publish their own contributions. Um, and of course, it's so nice that the book can be easily revised. We intend eventually to uh, apply for another ALG mini grant and do a serious revision. So the whole thing is divided into these uh, five, that seems like six, so, okay, anyway, uh, large units uh, dealing, with, um, uh, dealing with different elements of, of the engagement with music. Uh, just a couple uh, sample chapters from the table of contents. Uh, so, for example, uh, the one sung and dance drama, we've got Hamilton, so something pretty recent and trendy that kids are likely to be familiar with. Uh, we have an Italian opera from 1608, an Austrian uh, opera from 1791. 
yeah, I think that's right. Okay, um, and uh, and then a Chinese opera. All right, and it looks just gorgeous. I was very very happy with how it came out. Here you can see the top of one of our listening guides, and great public domain images collected from the web. All right, so a few reflections benefits of the collaborative process so number one total buy-in from all instructors uh, once the book was published it became required uh, for all music appreciation courses at my institution but i hate telling people what to do i don't want to tell people to teach out of a book that they have a problem with so by inviting all instructors to participate at whatever level they wanted to in the creation of the book um, I can feel totally confident that either they're happy with it or uh, they yeah, have no excuses for not being happy with it. Um, but uh, basically everyone has been very happy. I've heard nothing negative. This provided some wonderful opportunities for professional advancement and development for adjuncts. Uh, in fact, of the four people who contributed writing, one of them has now started a music history PhD program. One of them, this is, this is someone who didn't write but contributed in other ways, has now joined the faculty as a, a full-time instructor. Uh, and, and then another one of the authors uh, won a major teaching award the next year. I, I don't know that the book is responsible for that, but it sure didn't hurt. Accountability is great. Even though, again, I, I did most of the writing, having having these deadlines people that i'm responsible to people who are reading what i'm writing as i'm writing it is really valuable and absolutely caused this to happen on the extraordinary timeline that we were working with having collaborators i mean obviously always you get this wonderful broadened knowledge base one of the cool things about this book is the whole first chapter is about music cognition and music therapy which are topics that a lot of our students are really interested in and that are not included to my knowledge in any other music appreciation textbooks. Um, but we had someone on the team who knew about those things and really wanted to write about them. Um, so that's a, that's a great example. There's also lots of, lots of the popular and jazz topics were contributed by people who were not me um, and made a really meaningful addition to the book. Also brilliant corrections made by my collaborators throughout as I made incredibly stupid mistakes. Um, uh, finally, the contribution of unique skills um, that no one person has. Um, there was one person who made a whole bunch of really neat animated videos to demonstrate the music fundamentals that are described in chapter two. I have no idea how she did it. I think they're really cool. Um, and then someone else designed uh, all the graphics and the listening guides uh, who had, had that, that skill set. Finally, and this is maybe the coolest thing, with the open publishing platform um, and, and, and the framework that, that allows this book to be, uh, there is ongoing potential for contributions from anyone who is using the book. So I've already had a few really cool ones. Uh, last fall, someone took the book and turned it into a website. So I now have a web version that I can share with my own students. Um, and that is just a really neat tool to have. Um, someone else is currently adding alt text. You might notice it's missing from the current PDF. Um, but the next PDF will have alt text. And I'm hoping it'll be published in about a, a month, hopefully before the end of the summer. Um, and I've had other people contact me saying, hey, I would really love to write about uh, Asian American art song. And I absolutely welcome that. It's so valuable. Uh, challenges of collaboration, of course. I actually started this project by talking to someone else who had led um, the creation of the art appreciation textbook published by UNG Press. And that's a great book. Um, but right from the start, she was telling me that trying to wrangle together contributions from different people is, is a lot of challenge. The biggest the, is, is a big challenge. The biggest problem is inconsistency in, in, in quality and then also in, in style. Uh, you want a textbook to be relatively consistent and predictable throughout, both in terms of voice and in sort of the design of the sections, the level of detail. 
Um, and so that was that was that was certainly something that it was good to be prepared for. Uh, fairness and stipend allocation. Um, uh, I don't know. Now that I have a good distance from this, that doesn't strike me as a major challenge. Uh, but it did become a little bit difficult working with so many people making such different contributions uh, to feel like um, like those contributions were being respected on their own terms. Um, however, luckily, uh, with the ALG support, there really was plenty of money to uh, pass around to uh, the collaborators, and they were very flexible in making adjustments as they became necessary. And finally, communication, always hard. Um, uh, we, we still are across four campuses. Um, uh, we still have different schedules, different levels of investment, and different preferences in communicating. Um, uh, so, uh, so I think that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to say. I got through that pretty fast. Um, and so I am absolutely delighted to answer any questions. Well, we have one question right now in the Q&A, um, which I, I don't know if you can access that and read it or I can read I it out I for I you. I think I can, I can. Okay, as a music <laughs> appreciation textbook, while music appreciation is usually more geared to non-music majors, is this being used in the courses for music majors or are there hopes to make a modified book more geared to students studying music? All right, that's a great question. So this is definitely created 100% for our non-music major music appreciation students. Uh, so at, at UNG music appreciation, it's in, it's in the core curriculum. It enrolls a huge number of mostly freshmen every year. And the vast majority of them um, are not going to study music and at least half don't even have any kind of background. However, um, I have used this book in my music history classes also. Um, I feel it's, it's even though it's written at that at that lower level, and uh, my my biggest my biggest uh, concern about using it with music majors is it doesn't uh, employ the uh, rigorous citation that, that I want them to employ. Um, but since I wrote it, I can explain what the deal is. Um, but I absolutely use this uh, to supplement my music history courses, um, especially because writing this book gave me the opportunity to incorporate some I think unjustly neglected examples that really should be in the music history survey. Um, and then my, my sort of uh, new ongoing project uh, to put together and fill up a repository of uh, example add-ons in the style of this textbook, but sort of with music majors in mind, uh, will further, I hope, fill that gap. Um, I'm sorry, it's, it's sort of, it's, uh, it's something that's actually, it's being uh, housed by the Music Library Association in Humanities Commons. Uh, and we just uh, launched it a couple of weeks ago, uh, but it's, it's uh, a, a repository, an open access repository for people to contribute their own examples, basically. Um, and so, uh, so to me, the, those are very sort of convergent projects where I wanted this great curriculum for music appreciation. And I also want to make some changes to music history. And I also want to facilitate the continued contribution of um, new materials that will be available to uh, anyone teaching any sort of music class. <laughs> All right, so I just, oh, I just opened up the chat. I'm gonna sort of scroll through these <laughs> if there are no more questions. Yes, so Jeff is great. Yeah, I knew things had changed recently, um, but uh, read the website and definitely pursue the Affordable Learning Georgia program if it is available to you. And, um, oh yeah, so where, yeah, the audio tracks. Yeah, that's, so that's actually, that's really important for someone who wants to pursue this kind of project. Um, all of the audio tracks are YouTube videos. 
the vast majority of them are copyright holder published YouTube videos. Um, so published by the record labels. Uh, I, I made a real effort to find links that would be as reliable as possible and also as, as legit as possible. Uh, so vast majority are official record label YouTube, YouTube audio videos. Um, a few of them are uh, published by um, uh, uh, performance companies like our production of the Nutcracker, for example. Um, so, um, so it's as, uh, as above board as possible. I hate the fact that I'm sending kids to like watch an ad at the front of their video, but there's nothing that we can do about that. Um, uh, but another problem with these kinds of books and the other UNG Press Music Appreciation textbook very much has, has had this problem is that links go dead. Um, so one of the things that we did to deal with that that I've been really happy with is that the book, if you click on one of the links or scan the QR, QR code, it won't actually um, take you directly there. It routes you through some sort of table that's managed by uh, the press and we can swap out links in the table without having to republish the book. Um, I think so far one link has gone dead in the, you know, uh, what is it, 14 months that the book has been live. So that's gone pretty well. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so basically the table of contents it, uh, uh, oh, the, the, the table, no, list, no, there is not an official list of the recordings. Um, uh, but yeah, we, 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 we also, uh, each, each link to the recording says exactly what the recording is. Uh, it usually has um, the performer and the ensemble and the year so that it can be looked up. Um, and sometimes it doesn't really matter what recording you listen to. Sometimes if there's a time stamps uh, listening guide, it is very helpful to be listening to the correct recording. All right, any other questions for our presenter? I've been told by colleagues to wait for 45 seconds of silence in meetings at state. Oh. I can never do it. I know just, it's just, I'm, I know. I'm like, I, <laughs> I, love the I love the teaching tactic of like asking a question and then letting there be silence, but it's a lot harder on Zoom. Oh, it's terrible. I can't do it. Um, well, Esther, thank you so, so much for a fantastic presentation. Um, I, I really want to read the book now and I'm going to go do that. <laughs> hey, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's great. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you all in the next sessions. Very good.